Hey guys, welcome to the channel. In this video, I'm going to be sharing a short clip from my course on Pluralsight's on the essentials of Azure Databricks. To watch the full course, head over to the link in the description below. Thanks. And now let's head over to the video. In this demo, we're going to set up our Azure Databricks environment by creating a workspace and then walking through using it by creating an Azure Databricks cluster and notebook. Let's go ahead into our Azure portal. Here in the Azure portal, I will start by clicking the create a resource button. Then in the search box, I will type in Azure Databricks. I should see Azure Databricks come up, so I'll go ahead and select it. Click the blue create button. And this will send us over to the page where we will create our Azure Databricks resource. So let's go through the steps. I already have my subscription selected, so I will create my resource group. I'll do this by selecting create new and I'll call my Databricks RG. Press OK. And then I'll give my workspace a name. I'll call mine my first Databricks workspace. I should probably give you a heads up, I do not have the most creative names. For the region, I'll leave it as is. And for the present here, I'll take advantage of the 14 day free trial. For this demo, we do not need to worry about the other tabs like networking and advanced. We'll leave it as the default. Go ahead and press review and create. And this should bring you to a page where you see the summary of what you will be creating. And if it looks good, go ahead and press create. This will take a few minutes, so we'll pick up once it's completed. Now that the resource has been created, Go ahead and select the blue button that says go to resource. This will take you into the Azure Databricks service page. And from this page, we'll be able to click the button that will take us to the workspace. And this button is in the center of your screen where you see the Databricks logo. And under the logo is the blue button that says launch workspace. Click this button and this will open the workspace in a new tab. We can see our Azure Databricks workspace environment with all the different options on the homepage. First thing we're gonna do in the workspace is create our first cluster. Go ahead and click the option that says new cluster. I'll give my cluster a name. It's gonna be called my first cluster. And over here, you see you have many different options to configure the cluster. But for the purpose of this demo, we'll keep it simple and select the default. And to create this, go ahead and click the create cluster button up on the top. This will begin the create cluster process. This will also take a few minutes. So we'll pick up once it's completed. Now that we have our cluster created, we can now create our notebook. We'll do this by selecting the workspace on the left hand side and then users. And under users, you can see the option to create a notebook here. Give the notebook a name. I'll call mine my first notebook. Next option is to select the language you want to code in. You have a few different options. I'm going to leave it as Python. And next, we'll select the cluster, which the only cluster which you see here is the one we just created. And I'll go ahead and press create to create the notebook. Here is my notebook. One of the things you want to do is double check in the notebook that your cluster is connected. This is important because you need the cluster to run code inside of your notebook. We're just going to check here on the top left hand corner and select the cluster. And now we'll go ahead and type our first line of code in our notebook. Let's start with something simple. If A equals 1 and B equals 2. What is A plus B? Go ahead and run this by clicking on the play button, which is all the way to the right. And select run cell. Or you can also press shift enter together on the keyboard. And this will also give you the same result. You should see the output, which is three. This is just an example that shows you how to do a simple math operation inside a notebook. You might be thinking now, how can we bring data into this Databricks environment? 
So I have an example here where I have a few lines of code that pulls data in from my GitHub repository. I have the code inside of the exercise files and also you can also find the link here which also has the lines of code that we're gonna run. Go ahead and click the plus button to add another cell. Paste the code here. The first line of this code is important something called pandas which is a python package used for data analysis the next line will grab my csv file which has some movie data from my github repository and what it's going to do is save this as a data frame and i'm going to call my data frame movie csv this could be called just about anything you want it to be called i also want this output to have a header so i'm going to print out the phrase display my first databricks table now I can display my data by calling the data frame inside of a function called display. So go ahead and run this cell. Now we can see the movie CSV file displayed as a table. If you want to see more of the data, you can expand it uh, because it shows here that it is showing the first 1000 rows. So if you have the real estate, you can expand this all the way to see the 1000 rows. You might also be wondering how many rows are in the CSV file. I can quickly find out with this built-in function called LEN. So I'm going to do this inside the next cell where I call the data frame CSV from the LEN function. So if I run this, I can see that this has about 45,000 rows. So this wraps up our demo on understanding the Azure Databricks environment. Hopefully you have a better understanding of how to deploy Azure Databricks what the workspace looks like, and some of the functionalities within the workspace like creating a cluster and running code in an Azure Databricks notebook. Thank you for watching this clip of my course on Pluralsight. Please head over to the link in the description to watch the full course at Pluralsight.com. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. I'll see you in the next one.